There's one thing that Rod does really well, and that's the introductions. And it's going to be really hard to live up to that, I think. Um, there are five books left from what he's talking about, and they're at the back. And they're quite beautifully made. Cameron Anstey made them by hand, and so I have to say that part at least, because he deserves that. He put a lot of work into it. Um, I, uh, I had some difficulty trying to figure out what I was going to read tonight, because I have been reading to the local audience a little bit over the summer, and I didn't really want to bore anyone. So I was trying to decide whether I should be reading new work or older work. Should I be reading from the chapbook that was just printed or not? Um, so I'm going to start with some homeless pieces that maybe people haven't heard and then um, go into something that was written in the winter time that nobody has heard and then maybe touch on some poems from the manuscript that uh, the chapbook was selected from and then some really fresh stuff which I probably shouldn't read but I'm going to read. Uh, so that's how it's going to shape up I think although I'm open to changes. I may not need my glasses, but I might change my mind. <laughs> so thanks to Rod and to Tree and to Pearl and to everybody that came tonight. It's just, uh, Atwood is reading and look at all the people here. This is really good. <laughs> yeah. 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 <laughs> The Hunter's Story. Lies here, the burnt crib and twisted mattress frame. So long, dear, so long since she left him a single branded box spring char. What remains evidential of her sparrow's nest? A skeleton stove, a melted plastic doll. There's no love left in the forest. Here lies. Black ash and thumb-worn porn, heat-torn sheets out from under stone, his nine o'clock gone walking need. But too late tonight, too late for the fire tender, his empty bottled faith. What's left? A tipped tin of beans and wiener sticks unscathed. A deer hoist stationed over brown blood. A faulty hunter's unbound chains, wind-blown and swinging. The Fisherman's Story. He recalls the summer he behaved badly, was awful, and needed restraint. Feels, or still can't, he slips a tipped knife into a finger to make sure. His wrist flicked, half cracked a fish neck above a ripple moon. Red gills slit and wet scales flipped oil slick water in his cupped palms, her two bright eyes. The housewife's story. The first time he rides in a limousine is four days after he dies. His car is spotless, screw you dignified, reflecting the casualty he leaves behind. She wears green to spite him. No one looks at the lines she cuts into her hands. Denial stays unopened in a clutch of his letters. Tiger lilies pressed to her side, never given. Flowers are for funerals. A man stumbles, fiddles with a latch on the limo's back door. She moves to the side. Nothing happens, but oh, does she miss and regret. The Handyman Story. It must have been the fumes, right? The fumes must have combusted or something like, and the smoke filled and the fire in the walls, right? It was the fumes. He could smell nothing, and the windows were wide open on the windiest day, and the fan was on, right? It must have been the mask he bought for $40 or something like. He smelled nothing, and the windows were wide open when the smoke filled and the fire in the walls, Right, the phone was dead already. And the fumes must have been awful, all his needful things, all fuck and no time, and the girl watching television, an angelfish in the aquarium circling into black. So that was one group. The next group, um, 
Well, the title of the next group is called Novena for a Sudden Fall. A Sudden Fall. And in Catholicism, although I'm not a Catholic, I can't really speak on this, but I believe a novena is a small devotion in the form of a prayer. And it's said over nine successive days. And generally it's a wish for small graces, or it's a simple devotion to something or someone. So I've completely bastardized the term, and I've <laughs> made nine poems. Novena for a sudden fall. One. If this is what it is like, unhoused, quick pressed and released up against a leaf roar around and a cut of blue, a bit lip moon. Two. Ground wet. If she can't lay her hand on him, she lays her hand on him, his silver cross and silver worn stones. Now, then, rain. Three, scent of, taste of, honeysuckle damp on her fingers and wet to his mouth. Four. Love, rain heavy. Rain heavy, love. Heavy love rain. Five. Undressed. Hand to hip bone, curve and tangled ivy. She pushes under his silver cross and silver worn stones, pressed deep to the midline of his body. Believe in, what does she believe in? This rain heavy on skin. Six, what to be afraid of and want not? This wishbone swallowed whole. Perhaps and very likely there'll be pain. Seven. Blue eyes, gray eyes, lips wetter than he thinks. Blue, unlike any other blue, she says everything around her blue. Eight. Smoke stairs and smoke, stone stairs and smoke blown down. Stone house, a hundred and fifty years old, unhoused. Nine. Devotion, reprise. And so we all pray for what we want, our wishbone luscious reach and touch. So, I wish it got more upbeat, but it really doesn't. <laughs> um, I think, I can't say that I'm finished a manuscript, I think I'm close to finishing a manuscript and it's uh, titled Post Apothecary and uh, the chapbook at the back was a section from that. So I'm going to read a bit from the manuscript in general. I'll just stop there. Nil by mouth. She is right-handed, left. Retain the language, not the visual side. She is hungry. She is nil by mouth. She is a note hung over a bed, a metal trolley and swinging doors. She is semi-prone and steadied and there are lights, raw lights. She is on, off, oxygen ventilation, reeled, rocked, wet tangles of hair, hands swept over a bright eye. She is making it all up. Can't possibly see through a retinal slit, a dilated corner of the button labeled treat. Oh, Ophelia, oh, crazy Jane. 
Willow straw and wildflowers and sparrow nested hair, she wakes to feathered moons and clutches a wealth of primrose. Heat tossed as night sweats, crux of best crux of breastbone cut and quivering. Unribbons her pinafore, she is ready, she is ready. Open eyes, open palms, prick. Pin needle threaded with cat gut slides through fingertips and beads blood drip. She pulls each stitch tight. Closed eyes, closed fists. Rigor, not rictus, despite her tremor chest and skin slash along mouth line, opiate velvet sleep. Fallen by fever therapy, eyes flit closed in a pall of being undersmothered, pale bud of prairie rose plucked, plucked petalless. Red palimpsest congealing on stone floor where her head split against. Her flinching reoccurs. Sorrow, lie bleached, one palm line left, heart caustic and deep etched crystalline fingertips. And who is she now? Who is she now? Back slapped out of the dank and coming to a clearer state, a blanched calm. There was a crawl space upstairs. There's just a few more from this one. Plunge. Which I think is um, at the back in a broadside, and that's free. I think there's like maybe five of them. You can grab them on the way out. Plunge. Sparrow feathers and wing buds flatten and press into the forest floor. So be it. Fall where I fall and lay back, rabid and frothing, face turned upwards, sun swept. Or plunge into his thicket snatch, as simple as my frock slips, as root claws into earth. Who could stay like that, above me and hovering, unmerciful? After murmurs of hush-hush, his gentle stroke of dark against stigmatic sky. Um, this is the last poem from the chapbook. It's, uh, it's, it continues, but the pronoun changes, so that's all I'm saying. Fresh cat skin, ra fresh cat skin wound around her chest. She is shiverlet from slick, wet fur. Mouth agape and panting, her fingers inslip his white witch, that rendered tallow and smoldering pitch. Drop attacked and camphor shocked cataleptic, she swallows whorehound and tar feather and cod liver oil. Good night, good night, good night. It's time to go to bed. Wounds, sutures. It's kind of, it's just sort of tongue twisters for me, so I have to take a drink every now and again. Marcus knows what I'm talking about. <laughs> Wounds, sutures. Darkness against a window and slipping under sill. I want to lean out and be rain wet, wash scars from where his fingers swept, sulfuric until my fever broke. Would I tell him about her smooth, pale body, skinned cat standing upright, balancing a tray of empty teacups, spilled tea? Four feet tall, I thought, with her white tongue lolling. I am breathing on my own, but my fears are blunted flat or inappropriate. Better to lean out over a basin, bend and drip water down, wash his choke cherries stained from my lip seam, suture ripped, self split, sanguinous. Would I tell him this? All my shadows crouch in corners, glisten moonlight. Clutch, tear, 
disgorge, a scalp vein needle taped to the dorsum of my hand or to the anti-cubital fossa. Yes, I am breathing on my own, on my own. Untether, unhinge, tremulous, my body taken by its shaking, fever flushed, touched at the curve of collarbone. How human this. Baby bunting wrapped in rabbit skin, wind singing, meek swept, a blue ribbon drawn tight around a wound. His lips pressed to my pulse and restless, our gentle hush. Restrain the body, calm the mind. Half light, laid down gentle in an alcove, thorn slash, I will, I will not, sheet clutch, unhoused by an upwelled lip quaver and pushing under and out of air, mouth covered by his hands, red-handed and disarrayed, a quiet humming and furtive rush. Forgive us this, when white is not white, but blue, blue, and rose hips plucked and held luscious. Now, this is gonna be the indulgence factor. I'm gonna read new, 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 new <laughs> stuff, so. Um, <coughs> This summer I started looking into um, folk songs and rhymes from a long time ago and looking at the meanings and interpretations of them and um, rewriting those in a modern sort of context. So you might hear echoes of simple songs like Ring Around the Rosie or Sing a Song of Sixpence, London Bridge is Falling Down. And there's, uh, I'll just read three parts. They're a little longer than my other ones. And um, it's, I'm calling it the counting, the counting house, but that'll likely change. One, our proposal in an earlier century refers to an issue obliquely. Regardless of our association with the movement of our cited links, recanted, what origin, according to what common forms of misinterpretation? What I thought you said is that my falling has always involved a dropping to the ground, interpreted here as rhyme, not death, not my literal fall or heartbreak, instead, but a curtsy or any other form of respective bending movement though all evidence points strongly against this, and what was given was, perhaps, our, our, our popular conjecture evolving into complex gossip, and so we continue to derive an explanation. For example, when you said this is like nothing else, love is what you meant, and we want a different interpretation for every line. Two. According to, and fittingly, the first line evokes the break, and your pockets fill with flowers to conceal the smell of dying. So concludes another succumbing to the eventual standardization of words and our inability with language, our hushed, unspoken beliefs until now, which we generally considered baseless. So for you, angel, arched and one-winged, I recite a third version of Pomander and Capacity of Posy, which seems rather dissimilar. The only authentic reference here being my ring, my ring of roses, moreover, that, moreover and other than our search for happiness eventually led us there. We would have, oh, we would have both fallen down. Place a live blackbird in a pie. Then cut out each modern ending or any verse parallel, a religious or a historical significance or reverence to be alive. Oh, we were alive, oh, as we spoon fed our Westport honeyed woe and paid sixpence for a stolen line. 
typeset in letterpress version, only to be revived, but unattributed to I, a nipped, unfortunate maid, there is no evidence of me hanging out your clothes. Say then, this can be lasting, maybe calm, say still, say, oh, I do, I do, I do, I do, I really, I still do, say, love, oh, how grows your garden. Thank you.